What is up everybody and welcome to a brand new video from a Russian citizen telling you the realities of what is actually happening in Russia right now. And I would really appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button and the like button real quick because this one is going to be very interesting. But before we get into anything very interesting, I would like to show you something that goes around on Russian television. Let's see if we can bring the Russian citizens back to Russia. I, I just want to finish my thoughts with this appeal to people who live abroad. Russians. Now hundreds of thousands of wealthy people, especially Russians, Moscovites, St. Petersburgers, live in the Emirates, live in other countries, in Thailand, there. Return to Russia, because what may begin from October to December may truly become the beginning of a very serious new geopolitical reality on the planet. And do not be surprised later if the countries you find yourself treat you very different than you are used to, at the very least. Therefore, now you need to think about packing your bags, returning assets, withdrawing money from accounts and going back to Russia. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna be packing my bag and gonna be going back to Russia after I saw this that is exactly what I'm gonna do yes I totally trust you some random guy on television telling me this because for some reason he thinks that if Russia is doing something the countries that the Russians have escaped to are going to make it even harder for them to live there I don't think that is the way it works coming back to crazy people like you to zombified people to a government which zombifies people and sends them to the meat grinder? Heck no, I am not going back. And you know what? If I got any Russians watching me right now who are watching this channel, I advise you not to go back. Because on November 1st, there's going to be a new system running around on the internet, which is you get a notification that you need to go to the army enlistment office to get mobilized or to do your mandatory one-year service and from that exact day you get that notification you're no longer going to be able to leave russia drive your car sell your properties or anything like that your life is over you're trapped in russia so yeah that's not the best idea to go back and uh you know they're implementing this system only for one reason and that reason is to do another wave of mobilization and we could see that vladimir putin himself has said that he needs to create a bigger army because the world is against russia but he doesn't realize that the whole world is against him because he's doing the most horrific atrocities that you can even imagine and this guy is trying to trap the russian citizens to kill them all off now another part of that story as well the other day we got the same guy the same guy on television. He is the biggest ass licker in Russia, on Russian television. The biggest propagandist that the world probably even knew. I call this Goebbels TV. Literally, this Solovyov guy spreads Putin's butt cheeks and says whatever. Spreads Putin's butt cheeks and licks him out because... Alright guys, listen to this. I would advise you to listen very carefully and see that during the years of Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin's service in his homeland, he never once threw words around. Not once. And whenever Putin says something, he does it. What a disgusting and a hypocritical liar this guy is. That's just a blatant lie. How could they even say this on television? People in Russia should know better. I mean, like, come on, guys, listen to this. Putin, by the way, said that he would not raise the retirement age, change the constitution, or start the war with Ukraine. And he said that after his presidential term, he will go into opposition and start scolding the government. When did he manage to do whatever he said? Everything that he says is a big lie. Everything that he plans does not work because all of it is being stolen by his friends. He just lies about everything. He said that there's not going to be a mobilization. A mobilization started. He said that he's not going to be changing the constitution. He changed the constitution. He said that he's going to end his term. He's never going to end his term until he ends. And when I mean ends, you know what I mean, ends. That is when his presidential term is going to end. So he's a big, big liar. 
And the way that the Russian propaganda is putting all of this for all the Russian citizens, it is just unbelievable. It actually makes me so angry that they have the nerve to say this crap. Literally, guys, come on. Those guys are just unbelievable. Anyways, let's get to another term. Funnily enough, you guys know that Elon Musk has turned off Ramzan Kadyrov, the leader of Chechnya, his Tesla Cybertruck. So what did he do? He bought from Parallel Import two more Cybertrucks and sent it to the front line after he complained about Musk turning off his car and he made a video about it. So check it out. Now, obviously, this is a advertisement video, but who in the world sends an electronic vehicle, an EV, into a battle zone? My question is, first of all, where the heck are you going to charge that thing? And what is the point of this? I mean, like, come on. You you need diesel trucks, gasoline trucks, not a flipping elect... It is just like, what the heck? And this is all done to show how powerful and amazing... Russia is and they don't care about anybody turning off their cyber trucks and you know sending them off to the battle zone which I'm pretty sure actually didn't get sent over to the battle zone but if they did why and you know what's interesting that is Russian taxpayers money right there sending cyber trucks oh my god this is just uh is this like is this like the the new Toyota Hilux, you know, the one that uh, you see in Iraq and Afghanistan with machine guns. Is this the new thing right here with the Tesla Cybertruck? Flipping heck. I just imagine, right? You got a Tesla Cybertruck in a battle zone and it goes out of power. And you're like, all right, guys, let's turn on this really loud generator to charge this bleeding thing. Seriously? Oh, it's just and and people are proud of this in Russia probably they're probably really proud that they could say screw you American sanctions we're sending your vehicles over to the battle zone but he they, those those cars are probably going to be turned off as well very very soon if they haven't been turned off yet now another interesting story from Russia which I find amazing you guys know who the new elite of Russia is and the new elite of Russia are the soldiers from the Russian military who have returned back you know home safely somehow and uh, not all, all of those soldiers are just you know ordinary citizens a lot of those soldiers were convicts that have done horrific things very horrific things I've heard stories about some of them, you know, killing their own parents, grandparents, children, and whatnot. But we got this five-time convicted robber and abandoned who robbed children is now the new elite who can teach children patriotism. Can you imagine this? A, a guy who robbed children is going to schools to teach children how to be patriotic. I cannot believe this is real life. This looks like a really bad movie. I mean, like, come on. How could this even come up 
in somebody's mind to do something like this. And the funny thing is, which is not funny, but actually very sad that an old pensioner who would have went into a rally, right, to participate against the government would be sent to prison while this guy is teaching the kids how to be patriotic. Now, another interesting story that we got out of Russia is the second huge attack from the Ukrainian side using UAVs and attacking military sites which hold missiles and ammunition. In Tuharetsky district of Krasnodar was attacked by a UAV. And you know what's interesting? You know what's really, really interesting? Let me read this out to you. The head of the region, Kondrachev, reported two drones were suppressed by air defense and electronic warfare forces. I quote him, due, due to the falling debris of one of them, a fire broke out, which spread to explosive objects. Detonations began, he said. From the videos you guys seen, right? Do you think, like, first of all, are they holding those ammunitions and missiles in a wooden barn? How can how can a debris that is on fire puncture a warehouse that has ammunition and missiles inside of it? How? Oh my god. I mean obviously, you know the reality probably the drone hit it straight on spot on and it caused the explosion, right? But saying that it's a piece of debris that was on fire is just funny. They're, they're embarrassing themselves. And now I got to tell you, honestly, I'm actually scared how Russians are storing nuclear warheads. Because uh, if they're stored the same way as missiles and ammunition is stored, Russia is in very big trouble. You don't want huge nuclear explosions because, first of all, it's going to kill a lot of innocent civilians and you will have nuclear smoke flying around the place and i'm pretty sure we don't even know where those places are but i'm just i'm just i don't even know what to say guys i i, I don't know how the heck can you build a a warehouse for missiles that's literally made out of wood or something because how can how can anything like it should be underground with reinforced steel concrete and stuff like that that would survive any blasts but no but no a bit of debris from a uav supposedly caused massive explosions in russia now the authorities have announced a temporary evacuation of residents of the village located near the fire site to nearby settlements a temporary accommodation point has been set up in Tehoretsk. according to preliminary information there are no casualties among the residents of the district as a result of the emergency it is also reported that 101 drones were shot down overnight flipping heck first of all that is a lot and a lot of drones and i'm, I'm just scared that uh you know hopefully hopefully no nuclear uh sites are going to be hit because that is going to be very scary but uh russians are just embarrassing themselves right now because you you can't even build a proper ammo storage you know i just i don't even know what to say this is what corruption does guys this is showing you the reality of corruption corruption is when a building is built right but some money was taken into somebody's pocket and this is the answer to it. it. There was a building, but somebody farts in it and it explodes completely with all the ammunition stored inside of it. Now, very funny story for you guys. On Russian television, from somewhere under the baseboard, they once again pulled out an Indian shaman who predicted that the war between Russia and Ukraine would end in the spring of 20. 25. You know what's actually really funny about this? He already predicted that the conflict would end in 2023 and the border situation would change for the better. For the better of who? Russia or Ukraine? What is this shaman smoking? Tell me. And this is not the shaman you guys are thinking about. This is some proper shaman that predicts the future. But let's check out this video right here. 
The conflict between Russia and Ukraine will come to an end in 2025, because Jupiter doesn't like conflicts. Relations between countries will improve, brotherly ties will strengthen, I see that the conflict will subside the next spring. From April next year, I believe that the border situation will improve. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin will play a huge role in putting an end to the conflict, putting an end to the agreement Putin. But you, you could see it is uh, especially noticeable how the border situation has improved in the Kursk region. And to finish this video off for you guys, and you know, I, I take this also very seriously because I think YouTube is probably one of the best platforms that gives a lot of opportunities to creators, people like me, who could share their thoughts, their own opinions, create somewhat of their own radio station or a TV channel where you could gather audience, create an awesome community because our channel's community right here is one of the best. But YouTube in Russia will be completely blocked. That is what the State Duma said, which is the Russian parliament. And Deputy Boris Chernyshov said that this will happen when domestic analogs such as RuTube and VK Video establish a content monetization system. So now, for YouTube to be completely blocked, the Russian streaming websites need to create some sort of a mobilization that will make it so that the creators will be able to earn money from it. The question is, Russians in Russia who are making content for Russians can't even make money anymore because AdSense is blocked, there's no advertisement in Russia or anything like that. So what's the point? Just move them all there, right? Some, some, Someone is trying to hold this off somehow, I'm pretty sure, but you know, I'm not surprised. They blocked Instagram already, they blocked Facebook. YouTube is the next one to go, and after YouTube, I'm pretty sure they're probably going to block all the internet, so the propaganda can really zombify every single Russian citizen living inside of Russia and make it become like North Korea 2.0, which is very, very saddening for me because I love my country. I hate the government. Russia could have been an amazing country. It has a lot of smart people that already left Russia. It has a lot of resources, a lot of amazing spots, amazing forests, rivers, and all sorts of stuff. It could have been a really amazing thing if the government would have changed somehow. And I really hope that soon enough, it will change as well. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate your subscribes, your likes, your comments. If you want to support me, you could also support me on my Patreon page. The links are going to be in the description. And I'll see you guys later because we will have some interesting videos coming out for you. Vlogish type of style after this video right here because i am going in a small trip to get some stuff sorted out so that i can start receiving my youtube payments once again thanks for watching stay safe stay positive and have a good day i'll see you guys later